Hello, I'm glad you joined us online right now, whatever time it is, I'm just really glad you're here. We all must put our faith in something. To make it through life, we will end up having to trust someone or something. We will either rely on our own smarts or strength or rely on a friend or a powerful person like a politician or prince, someone who has the power to help us. We don't even know if they will help, but we keep them in the back of our mind and that's how we rely on them. We, we think they could help us if, if we get into a big enough problem, we call on them. Or we may choose to rely on God and put our confidence in him. We usually exhaust the other options before we rely on God. That's the way I've done it. Um, and we, we, we exhaust all other possibilities before we put our confidence in God. The way it is, God has made faith an integral part of living life. Hebrews 11.6 and without faith, it is impossible to please him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. No one lives without faith. You must put your trust in something. We looked at the front side of faith last week, the fear of the Lord. It is the breakthrough point into the realm of wisdom. It's like tunneling through, boring through a tunnel, and you see the light at the end of the tunnel. That's the breakthrough point. Today, I want to talk about the flip side of faith, the tail side of the coin, trust in the Lord. These are bedrock principles that you can build your life on. Fear the Lord and trust in the Lord. They are attitudes that will unlock the treasures of wisdom. If you build your life on the side of a hill, it can be swept away in a moment. Like this house on the side of a hill is heading down fast. Webster's define trust as and assured reliance on the character, ability, strength, or truth of someone or something. When you trust someone, you place your confidence in them. You put your weight on them. The key question in trusting the Lord is, do I believe God enough to trust him to achieve the best outcome in this situation I'm going through right now. If you're going to fear the Lord and stay within his boundaries, that limits your options for making it in life. It limits them a great deal. So you have to trust him, God, to give you the best outcome. There are five dimensions in life. The first four we know, height, weight, height, width, uh, depth, and time. There is one more, God. And God is the most important factor in any situation. If you set your heart on pleasing God, you will be blessed. A good mom tries to help her children get a balanced meal. So moms don't let their kids eat cookies all the time. These cookies in this jar look like macaroons, and I love macaroons. <laughs> the child thinks it's no big deal to sneak a cookie here and there. Um, but over time, you will hurt your health if you don't eat right, if you don't eat in a healthy way. If you trust your mom, 
you stop sneaking cookies. If you trust God, who is your father, you stop sneaking around him and start trusting him to do good for you. If you trust God, you obey him, even when there's a shortcut you could take that's wrong or evil. Your faith causes you to stop and trust him. If you, you fear God, and so you stay inside the boundaries he set for life. And when you fear God, you have to trust him with the outcomes because God's way are not the world's way. And you can't do what the world does and take shortcuts. And the flesh is drawing us to do evil as well. Um, it's, 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 a, it's a battle going on inside of us between the flesh and the spirit. There's a shortcut you could take, but you don't take it because you trust God. You don't do what you think is best because you trust and obey God. You, you don't go your own way because you trust him. Here are the specifics of what it means to trust in the Lord. First, it means to believe that God exists and rewards. Hebrews 11.6, we read this passage before. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Here's a scene from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Indy is searching for the Holy Grail, and he hesitates and then ends up trusting the book that he, he obtained that he's been given, and let's watch what happens. He had to make a decision, and he chose to trust the book that was guiding him, and a bridge appeared out of nowhere. But it wouldn't have appeared if he hadn't taken that step. This is what Christians must do. God has given us a guidebook, the Bible, and we are meant to read it and follow the instructions in that book, the Bible. When you trust God completely, you put your weight of the weight of your life on him. A tightrope artist walked across the tightrope with a wheelbarrow several times. And then he asked, who will get in the wheelbarrow with me while I'm walking across the tightrope? That, that, if you trusted the tightrope walker enough to get in the wheelbarrow, that would be a tremendous demonstration of faith, wouldn't it? It's the same way with God. If, if you trust him enough, you put the weight of your life on him. You rest on him. You place your confidence in him. And when we follow the instructions in our guidebook, we thrive. When we don't, life doesn't go well. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. We should expect to take a leap of faith every once in a while. We do this because we have seen God come through over and over again, or you do it because the people around you, you're drafting off their faith. If you're new to the faith, then you're drafting off of them, and they have confidence. They have stories and testimonies of what God has done for them on their behalf. If you just started to walk with God, go ahead and trust him. He will come through with what 
he has promised to do for you. When you're at a crossroads uh, where you must choose faith based on God's character, you can know that he is faithful. The first time you come to a crossroads like this, it's scary and hairy, but take the step of faith and you will find out how faithful God is. We can do this because we believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. We, we can trust God to do what he says he will do, and he does it every time. Second, to trust in the Lord means relying on God alone to come through. Isaiah 31.1 says, Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help and rely on horses, who trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. But do not look to the Holy One of Israel or consult the Lord. Egypt was a major power among the nations at the time Isaiah was written. And woe to those who go down to Egypt for help. Woe means that's not good for you. It's not going to be good for those who seek help from other nations. It is a woe to those who rely on horses, who trust in chariots, they are trusting in their own strength and in military might. Woe to those who do not look to the Holy One of Israel or consult the Lord. We, we should look to the Holy One of Israel, God himself, and that means to trust him for help and guidance, and he will give it. James 1.5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all men and without reproaching. He comes through with wisdom every time you need it. Third, we must focus on staying faithful even when things look impossible. God always sets it up so that we must Walk by faith, not by sight. <clears throat> I, I've been through some times when it looked impossible, and God's coming through every time. When Cindy and I started the church, we had $950 promised in very, various denominational agencies, and rent was $750. So often during these times when I, we didn't know where groceries were coming from and we would go to the mailbox and a check would be there to help with groceries and we <laughs> rejoiced. I never tie, tire of giving this testimony because God deserves all the glory. You never experience God's provision if you refuse to go out on a limb and do what he's telling you to do. God's provision of this building is a story I never get tired of telling as well. We met in a park for seven months uh, and we were told by the city uh, that we couldn't meet in the park during December and January, and it's a good thing because it was raining <laughs> in December and January, of course. A member of our congregation told her father, uh, who manages this building we're in, and her grandfather owns it, and he said a church that has been meeting in the building, this building, that we're in right now, they happen to be moving out at the end of November. 
just in time. God's provision is never late. It's always just in time. God is amazing. He, he provides for what his children need to do. When things look po impossible, choose faith. There are many benefits of placing your confidence in God. The first benefit is blessing from God. Psalm 44, blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after a lie. When you're in a pinch, you are tempted to trust anyone who can help you. You are blessed, though, if you do not turn to the proud. God blesses those who make the Lord his trust and put their confidence in him. Another benefit of placing your confidence in God is prosperity. Proverbs 28, 25, a greedy man stirs up strife, but the one who trusts in the Lord will be enriched. He, he will be prosperous. Greed is a strong desire to have something leading us to cut corners and not do the right thing, to sin. A greedy man stirs up strife. Greed repulses the people around you with whom you need to have cooperation. Here's a clip from the movie Wall Street. Let's watch this together. I wonder how much strife that guy has stirred up with this attitude, this arrogant, proud attitude. The world's values are upside down from the things God values, and they're exactly upside down. The next benefit is that life will flourish and grow. I'm just going to let this passage mostly speak for itself. Jeremiah 17, 5 through 8. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a shrub in the desert and shall not see any good come. Shrubs don't do well in the desert. They don't flourish. He shall dwell in parched places of the wilderness and uninhabited salt land. This is a picture of Bonneville, uh, Bonneville salt flats in Utah. <laughs> salt dries you up. It dehydrates you. And, and what this passage is saying, you if you don't trust God and you trust in man, you shrivel up spiritually. You, you dry up, and that's, that's not good. This passage continues. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water, that sends out its roots by the stream. Here's a picture of a tree by a, a river, and it is flourishing. That's what our lives will be like if we trust God. And does not fear the heat of trouble when it comes, for its leaves remain green, and it's, it is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. God promises to give you the outcomes, good in outcomes, good fruit, if you trust him. Another benefit of placing your confidence is God is you make plans that succeed. Proverbs 16.3, Commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. He won't establish evil plans, 
But if they're good overall and good for you, he will establish those plans. God also gives a direct path to your goals. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. If you trust God, you, you won't lean on your own understanding. You will ask God to give you guidance and he will give it. It may seem like the long way around because doing right usually slows us down. We, we need to be careful to obey God's word but it's the straightest legitimate path to the goal. These are just a few benefits of trusting the Lord. There are many more, and I've experienced many benefits from my faith and trusting God, putting my confidence in Him. God wants you to know how life really works so you can enjoy it. Parents watching their kids play a sport or doing ballet or doing a recital want them to do well. In fact, when I was watching my kids play sports, I was sweating it more than them, I'm sure. This is how God feels when he watches us live our lives. He hopes that we will do the right thing and obey him. Deuteronomy 5.29 says, Oh, that their hearts would be inclined to fear me and keep all my commands always, so that it might go well with them and their children forever. This shows God's heart for us. He wants us to fear him and trust him enough to keep his commands so that it will go well for us. That's why he wants it. It will go well for us. He knows that obeying him will go well with us and our children if they obey him as well. His commands are not random. They are the very path to life. Slice an apple and in the core, you see the seeds from which the apple grew. Slice through our responses to life and their results, relationships in relationships, parenting, finances, decisions, response to trouble, and, and so on. And you see the attitudes from which the fruit grew. Good fruit, good juicy fruit comes from good attitudes. Rotten fruit comes from bad attitudes. That's just the way life works. Your attitude is crucial in life. It determines to a great extent the amount of success you enjoy in life. Trusting God means believing that he exists, first of all, and second, that he rewards those who seek him. That's what it says in Hebrews eleven six. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who trust him or seek him. Trusting God means relying on him to come through even when it looks impossible. If you fear God and stay within his boundaries, you, you must trust him enough to, to have faith that you're, you're limited. Your options are severely limited when you trust God. You, you don't do the things that you want to do, that your flesh and the world tell you to do. But you do 
what's right before God and you do what he thinks is right. Stay faithful even when it looks impossible. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. I have some next steps to suggest for you to take as a result of hearing this message. You may have other steps that come to mind as we walk through this message, but James 1, 22 and 25 says, the blessing comes from doing scripture. That's why we always encourage you to do to do scripture and apply it to your life. So here are my suggestions. For the first time, I accept what Jesus did on the cross for, for me to forgive my sins and commit my life to follow him as Lord. This is how you connect with Jesus. And when you connect with him, streams of living water will flow from within you. That's been my experience. They, they flow. You have an endless supply of streams of living water if you tap into it, if you rely on God. That, it says this in John 7, 38. And the next step, another step, is choose the attitude of trust in the Lord. Choose a faith approach to life. Don't trust in anyone but God alone to help you. Now, that's going to take some effort because basically you have to go through all the other options or some of the other options. You may have a particular preference, but... God is trying to help you realize that you can trust him. And the second thing to do to choose the attitude of trust in the Lord is rely on God to come through. I've found him to be faithful to meet my needs and more. And then stay faithful when it looks impossible. He, he will make a th way through the trouble that you're going through. He, he will help. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you so much for the direction your word gives. And I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would help us to have the strength to take the steps of obedience you've laid on our hearts to take. And I ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.